Welcome to the Canadian edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Everything I hear him saying is truth. I know it. The truth of his word literally comes from the Bible. The more you watch it, the more you realize it is the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is my final week of teaching on four basics of hearing God's voice. This is the beginning of my fourth week, and I've spent one week talking about each one of these four things. Uh, this is a little booklet that I wrote on this. I think it's just a short 60-page uh, booklet, and this is a free gift to you. We also, I recently taught on this in Chicago, and you can get the entire teaching from Chicago on this USB, or we have it in DVD format, and then we have CDs and DVDs that were taken from my television program. And I encourage you to get this because, as I've already said in this teaching, hearing God's voice is just essential. If you can't hear God speak to you, then you're just by default left on your own. And I guarantee you, the voice of the devil, it seems like most people can hear that without any confusion, without any problem. You have to tune your hearing to hear the voice of God. When you get born again, it says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. You have the mind of Christ in your spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. You've been renewed in knowledge after the image of Him that created you. And so in your spirit, you just know things and you can be led by your born again spirit. It's not gonna be an outside voice coming to you saying, Andrew or whatever your name is, go do this, but it'll just be a knowing. You just know things by your born again spirit. Now there needs to be qualifications on that. And actually this voice of your born again spirit will never, boy, this is important that you get this. It will never contradict the written word of God. And so again, if you don't know the written Word of God, you're going to reject a lot of the things that you just intuitively know and you'll think it's just you because you don't have any way to verify. But the Scripture says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the Word of God is quick. That means alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So the written Word of God with your born-again spirit and just these things that you just know because you've been born in the image of God and you now have the mind of Christ. If you can put those two things together and if they match perfectly, well, then you know that that's the Holy Spirit. But if they're off, well, then something's wrong and it's certainly not the Word of God. And so you would reject those feelings and impressions that you have. That's what we've already dealt with in this series. What I want to talk about now is about how that the Holy Spirit can speak to you supernaturally beyond just your spirit. Now, in, in a way, it's hard to distinguish here. As it says in that verse I just quoted in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, showing you that the difference between your soul and your spirit is it's very hard to distinguish. The only thing that can really do it, the only thing that's sharp enough to divide asunder is the written Word of God. And so uh, when I'm talking about the difference between your spirit just knowing things and then the Holy Spirit giving you revelation, it's really just for the uh, purpose of discussion, for analyzing and understanding that we can make a distinction because our spirit, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse uh, 17, he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So our spirit is joined with the Holy Spirit and they are so closely united that just for the purpose of discussion, we can make a distinction between them. But the Holy Spirit can speak to you in ways beyond just your spirit knowing things. For instance, you can receive prophecy. And again, I could spend weeks teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let me just turn over here and just make reference to this. I'm not going to take time to teach on this, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the apostle Paul begins to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. And he said in verse 7, he says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man 
to profit with all. I believe that this is speaking about to every born again believer. Not even unbelievers don't have this, but people who have received salvation and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit have God giving them some gift of the Holy Spirit. And it says in verse 8, for one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another's diverse kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. Now again, we could spend time on each one of these, but God can speak to us supernaturally through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, if you've watched my program, there's many times that I've referred to things that God spoke to me in prophecy through another person. One of them was about me running on a track and I was leading the race, but the people in the grandstands were yelling at me and, and this person saw me getting off of the track and going into the grandstands and arguing with the spectators and saying, even if you win the argument, you're going to lose the race. And this was God speaking to me and showing me that I was trying to defend myself against people who were saying that I was doing it all wrong. And even if I won the argument, Satan was going to win because I wasn't preaching the gospel anymore. I was defending myself. That was a word from God. That was God speaking to me. And I have quoted this over the last four or five decades hundreds of times, and it's made a huge impact in my life. That was a gift of the Holy Spirit. I've also spoken about how that when we were beginning to build out our property and I just, things weren't working financially, I was trying to get a loan. And I was praying and saying, God, what, what do I need to do? God brought back to my remembrance a prophecy that was given to me that says, you aren't going to need a loan because you own a bank. And they went on to say that your partners are your bank and you, they, you cannot build more than your partners can pay for. That was a prophecy. And I had literally forgotten it for two years. But when I came into this financial crunch, all of a sudden I was praying and asking for wisdom. And the Holy Spirit brought that back to my remembrance. And this is how he spoke to me. Now, I spent a week because it was a big decision. I spent a week going back to the Word and seeing does what I'm saying and what has been prophesied, does it match up? You know, I, I don't know if you can understand this, but see, if it matches perfectly like this, well, then that gives me a confidence that this is God. But if it had been off, well, then I would have said, this isn't God. But there's scriptures that says, oh, no man, anything but to love one another. I don't believe it's saying that you're in sin if you are, if you're in debt, but it's saying that's not God's best. And Deuteronomy chapter 28 says that you'll be so blessed that you'll lend unto many nations, but you shall not borrow. And on and on I could go with different things. And so as I went to the Word and as I let my spirit bear witness, the Word of God, my spirit felt peace, which I taught on that last week about let the peace of God rule in your heart. My spirit felt more peace about not taking out a loan and just trusting God for the finances. So here was the Word of God. Here was my spirit bearing witness. And then the Word of God that I had through this prophecy bore witness. All three of those things matched perfectly and it gave me a confidence that I was hearing from God. And I acted on it. And I tell you, it's one of the greatest decisions I've ever made. But this is how you hear from God. And again, many of these things are subjective. You can take a scripture and you might interpret it one way that isn't actually what it's saying. I've had many scriptures. The church that I was brought up in twisted scriptures to say that miracles don't happen today, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't for today, and on and on it goes. And so they took scriptures, but they twisted it. But see, if you get the scripture what you are feeling in your heart, the peace of God bearing witness, a word from God. If all three of these things match perfectly and come together, then you have a confidence that you've heard from God. So again, the most foundational way is the word of God. There is no way to get around that. If you don't know the word of God, you are going to really be hindered in hearing from God any other way. Uh, for instance, I'm talking now about the Holy Spirit speaking to you through some gift of the Spirit or something like that. If you don't know the Word of God, you could have somebody prophesy something to you that is incorrect and head you in the wrong direction. I've actually had people before that came up and somebody prophesied that this person over there is going to be your mate. 
and they go ahead and get engaged and marry a person when they don't have any desire for this person. There isn't any union between them, and they do it because of quote, unquote, just listening to the voice of the Lord. See, a true prophecy never just gives you direction that is completely against what you feel in your heart. It will only confirm and maybe amplify, verify something that you are already feeling. But you don't base anything on just a prophecy that goes completely contrary. If somebody came and told me that, man, I'm supposed to do something, and it was against everything that the Lord has been leading me to do, it was against the Word of God, I guarantee you I would reject that prophecy in a second. Matter of fact, I did that just uh, two days ago, somebody coming and telling me stuff. They do this all the time. And if it doesn't bear witness with my spirit, I don't do anything with it. But if you receive a prophecy, if the Holy Spirit speaks to you, if it bears witness with your spirit, if it conforms to the Word of God, then that is a confidence that you have that this is a Word from God. But again, if you don't know the Word of God, you are going to be led astray. You're going to be su uh, subject to misinterpreting things. And not every feeling or impression that you have is from God. You have to use the Word to rightly divide between soul and spirit. Not every prophecy is from God, and so you have to use the Word. If it contradicts the Word of God, I don't care how passionate they were. I don't care how it looks like it might benefit you. If it goes against the Word of God, you reject it. Nothing, nothing ever, ever, ever supersedes the Word of God. I've actually had some people come to me that they probably wouldn't say it this way, but they would say that, you know, you're just Word-bound. You are letting the Word restrict you too much. God can lead you beyond the Word. Well, now, God might be able to give me an application of the Word and say something specific like, go buy this house or, you know, something that is more specific, but it is never going to violate the Word. I never go beyond the Word ever. And those who would say that, oh, the Word is just, you know, it's one way, but man, God can speak to you in these other ways, and it may be com completely contrary to the Word, but God has led me beyond the Word. Well, if you get beyond the Word, you are too far out there. That is not true. So you need to have these things work together. Again, that's the reason I said four basics of hearing God's Word. You need to have all four of these things line up I tell you, this is so important. If you could get this, it would really, really, really help you. So the Holy Spirit can speak to you through these gifts of the Spirit. You know, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, is are, those are two of the gifts that God has given me. And especially in the earlier part of my ministry, I used to operate in these a lot more. The reason that I'm not doing it as much now is because I'm trying to train other people. In our Bible college, I'm trying to raise up other people who can do this instead of me doing everything myself. So I'm more in a mentoring role right now, ministering to people. But in the beginning of my ministry, man, I used to operate in these gifts. I've called people out before that I've never seen them, and I've told, told them what their name is. I have read their mail and done things. And I tell you, it's impressive when you see something like that because there is no way that I could know these things. It's the Holy Spirit, and it just makes people's faith go through the roof because they know this has to be supernatural. There's no way for me to know these things. You know, when we first started our school, I was teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit and going into detail, and one of the things I was saying is that many people who operate in the gifts, they'll say, oh, the anointing lifted, and I just can't operate in the gifts anymore or they have to wait until the music is just right and until there's a certain mood before the Holy Spirit can come and move. And I was telling them, I said, I don't believe it's that way. It, it, you can operate in the gifts anytime you get in tune with God. It's not God that gets tired and has to leave. People get tired and they just physically can't continue to minister and they blame it on the Holy Spirit. So I was making this point that you, if you have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, they are at your disposal. It says that in the 14th chapter are talking about speaking in tongues and saying that you could only speak in tongues in three in a church assembly and they all had to be interpreted. And some people will say, oh no, I just can't help it. I, I'm moved by the Holy Spirit. If you can't help it, if you can't control yourself, then it's not God because it says the spirits of the prophets 
are subject to the prophets. If you can't control it, then it's not God. It's demonic or it's flesh. It's religious. And so you can control the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Anytime you get in tune with God, you can flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I was teaching that in our Bible school. And uh, I had, this is, I think, the very first year that we had the classes going. And, 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 and somebody just stood up and said, I don't believe it. You can't operate in the gifts right now. I said, I could too. I said, I could take this front row. There was about six people in this front row. And I said, I can prophesy to every single one of you. And they said, prove it. And so I just took these six people and I just prayed and I started ministering to them by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I mean, it was spot on. People were getting set free. People were receiving. And when I opened my eyes and looked, all of the rest of the people in the class had come up. And then they heard about it and all of the other classes came. And I wound up spending four hours prophesying over every single person in the school. Now, that's not bad, but that's not what God called me to do. He didn't call me to have a school where everybody comes and they just wait on me to receive for them. And then I, in a sense, I'm a surrogate birth. I birth their miracle for them. I get a word. I deal with everything. That's not what God called me to do. Now, again, I've, I do that. I still operate in the gifts, but now I'm more in a mentoring role and I'm trying to teach other people. This is what I'm trying to do with you is to teach you how you can hear from God through the Holy Spirit and you can do these things. But I'm telling you, you can receive knowledge from the Holy Spirit that goes far beyond your physical ability to know things. God has told me not to get on planes and I didn't and the plane crashed and killed people. God has told me things that there's, there's no way in the natural then I could have known these things. I remember one time that God just put a uh, couple on my heart. It's a long story. I won't go into the whole detail, but I tried to call them. Their phone was disconnected. I happened to know the wife's maiden name and where she came from, and it was Wilson. And so I, I knew she was from Longview, Texas, and I called every Wilson in the phone book. There was a hundred of them or whatever. And I just started going through the phone book and calling because I just felt impressed by God that I was supposed to reach out to them. And when I call, I finally call and got this woman that I was trying to find her and her husband. And uh, when I told her who I was, she hung up. <laughs> I was shocked. I said, I was just sure that the Holy Spirit was telling me to call them. Within just a few minutes, she called back and apologized. And anyway, it's a long story, but she, uh, they had lost their house. They had lost everything. Her husband had gotten out of the ministry, had walked away from God. And she was just praying and saying, God, I know we don't have a phone that we've had for years. Nobody knows where I am, but you're God. You could, you could have somebody call us. We've traveled all over the world ministering to people. You could have somebody call me. And as she was praying, I called. <laughs> and it startled her so much she hung up. But see, that was God. There's no way I could have known that. And I was able, uh, God used me to get her husband back into the ministry. Man, that's awesome. Did you know you can hear from God? Like, I've had that happen to me. I remember one time that I was being railroaded out of a church in Pritchett, Colorado. And I was just sitting there thinking, oh God, I need some help. And all of a sudden, a guy called long distance. And he just started shooting the breeze about the weather. And I said, look, man, I know you didn't call just to talk about the weather. And he said, no, God just spoke to me and told me that you need to be encouraged. You need someone to encourage you. And I tell you, I knew that that was an answer to my prayer. See, God can speak to you like that. Now, when those things happen, uh, you don't need a tremendous amount of discernment to know that that's God. And when you're praying and you get exactly what you're asking for. I remember another time that a guy that had for 12 years, we hadn't talked because he thought I just went off the deep end and he cut me off. And we were driving someplace and we went to this little tiny town, a hundred people in the town, and I knew that he was the Baptist pastor there. So I just started asking people where the Baptist pastor lived. And uh, they told me I knocked on the door. And when I, he opened the door and saw me, all of the color drained out of his face. He didn't even say a word. He just froze. 
And I said, could we come in? And he just stepped aside and I walked in. His wife was kneeling at a coffee table and she saw me and all the color drained out of her face. And I said, uh, you know, if this is a bad time, we can leave. And anyway, it's a long story, but they went on to tell me that just the day before they had resigned from their church, they lived in a town of 100 people that was 60 miles from the nearest town of 1,000 people. They were in the middle of nowhere. And they said, God, we know that it's nearly impossible, but you're God. You could send somebody here. We've encouraged others. Couldn't you encourage us? And they, and they said, we'll take anybody. And while they were praying, she was still kneeling around the coffee table. I knocked on the door. That's the only way they would have accepted me because I was the last person they wanted to hear from. But God used that to put us back together. And, and anyway, God can speak to you like that through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So this is what I'm going to be talking about this week. We're talking about how to receive direction through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, this is a valid way of God speaking to you. And as we read over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, for every person that's born again, every one of us have been given some of these gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to be talking about that more. But I would like to encourage you once again to please get this little booklet. It's a little 60-page booklet talking about four basics of hearing God's voice. I taught on this in Chicago in the first part of this year, and here is a USB that has the audio and video on it. Here's the video if you want to get that from the Chicago meeting. And then we have CDs and DVDs that were taken from my television program, the exact teaching that you're listening to right now, and you can get that. I promise you, you need to learn how to hear the voice of God. I don't know how people make it that are just on their own and they aren't being led by God. That's not the way that God intended us to live. So I really believe that this would help you. This is a free gift. We'll give it to you regardless of whether you send anything or not. Listen to our announcer and please call or write today. Just as I was teaching on our program today, I've learned how to hear God's voice, and God has clearly spoken to me about Karis Bible College and about expanding it, at least doubling the size. We need student housing. We need a student activity center where we can feed and we can also have more classroom space. We need athletic facilities. We need a hotel conference center. We need a performing arts center and just so many other things. I know that God has spoken to me about it and this is going to be hundreds of millions of dollars to build this and the Lord has spoken to me and told me to do it debt free. I don't have that money. You know, the good news is that there is no shortage with God. The bad news is that all that money we need is in other people's pockets. <laughs> we need people to join with us. And if you've been blessed through this ministry and if you would like to help us reach and double our capacity so that we could reach more people and train them up to go out into this end time harvest, I'd encourage you to please go to our website, awmi.net slash campus, and we have an artist rendering. Our architects have done a flyover where you can actually go inside of the buildings and look and see what we're going to build. It's going to be awesome, and we need to do this promptly. So I would ask you to go to awmi.net slash campus to look at this, and then there's a place that you can sign up and become what we call a foundation builder. You know, we'll accept any offerings. One-time gifts are appreciated, but it's really people who give on a monthly basis that are going to enable us to do this. And so please go check it out, awmi.net slash campus. And if the Lord bears witness with your heart, if you hear the voice of God, join with us and become a foundation builder today. Andrew is offering his booklet, Four Basics of Hearing God's Voice, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, Four Basics of Hearing God's Voice, is available in a CD or TV DVD album and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. This teaching is also available as a DVD album or USB recorded live at a ministry event. 
Each of these valuable resources is available when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Also on today's broadcast, Andrew mentioned his book, The New You and the Holy Spirit. This book is available when you contact us. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $135. Go to our website at awmc.ca and click on today's TV offer under the store tab to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. Man, I appreciate you guys taking the time to check out Army, check out the benefits. As a member of Army, you you become part of Andrew's uh, big army of, of ministers that are ministering with him and that are that are uh, we're mobilizing people around the word and the direction that God gives Andrew plus you get Andrew's live Bible commentary then you we also get you get four Karis Bible College courses per year the benefits that you get are just uh, I wish I would have had these when I pastored what the hell and I just want to encourage you to check these benefits out we can do more uh, together than we can individually and on our own. And I tell you, encouragement is something that is yeah. hard for ministers to come by, mm-hmm. and yet this is what this army is all about. So yeah. the website will give you a lot of the details if you'll check it out, and we would just love for you to be a part of this and receive all of these benefits. We're here to help each other and to get the gospel out and see Jesus glorified. Amen. Amen. I'd like to let all of you, our Canadian viewers, know that we have a Bible college in Toronto, and we would love to have you come and be a part of it. There's multiple ways you can take advantage, not only through the campus there in Toronto, but we have online courses, we have correspondence courses, uh, just a number of ways, but we want to help you, and we're making it as available to you as we possibly can. So check it out with the information's on your screen, our Carius Bible College, Toronto. If Andrew's teachings are making a difference in your life, consider becoming a Grace Partner with Andrew Womack Ministries Canada today. Grace Partners are special friends of the ministry who commit to giving $30 or more per month to help Andrew reach thousands of people here in Canada and around the world with the life-changing message of God's unconditional love and grace. If you'd like to become a Grace Partner today, go to awmc.ca or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220. 